I think Jonathan has set the record for Teacher of the Year making the most cool videos. <laughs> you got to set a high standard for uh, our next Teacher of the Year. I'm just telling you. He's like got this. All right. You got this acting career or something. Yeah. All right. Jonathan, you're recognized. So as most of you know, I really value teacher leadership and the conversation in the state about teacher leadership and what that means. These videos are profiles in teacher leadership. And, and I, I thought about what that really means. What does it mean to be a teacher leader at the core? And so I, I began this year with the end in mind knowing I would have to do this presentation and I would present on professional development. And if I'm going to single out you know, teacher leaders, should I go the Iowa route and have us do something where a comp compensation system for people who step up and do teacher leadership as a vocation? And I thought that's kind of short-sighted. Because teaching itself is leadership. So I took this approach. What are the fundamentals? And in my view, the research would indicate autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And these are the three prongs of adult leadership, which inevitably spurs teacher leadership. So what do we know? We know that the best PD is job embedded. And that, that's become kind of colloquialized in education, but it's job embedded. The culture of a school impacts student and adult learning. And obviously, if we want students to be learners, we have to also uh, make adults lifelong learners. Um, right now, here's what's so encouraging to me. Right now, in every school, we can do this. This is possible. So we've heard presentations in the past where there's new ideas, brand new ideas, and, and trust me, I, I love brand new ideas, but I want to make this as empirically based and as specific as possible. What I'm talking about in this presentation is possible right now with no new dollars from any legislator or any group or anything. We can do this tomorrow. So what is it? It's really rooted in the action research cycle. So let's take a look at that, if we will. The, the, the top piece being identifying focus areas. And we talk about PGPs, what that means, professional growth plans. You hear a lot about that. That's what this number one uh, point is. It's getting your, um, your focus area and what is your ideal state in that focus area? Where do you want to see yourself grow? Secondly, you have to assess the current reality and that takes observation. That takes personal reflection. That may take videoing yourself. That takes being honest. Then you create a plan, and then obviously in big letters, kind of like the Nike uh, slogan, you just do it. You get in there and you have to do it. And that's really what well, uh, this presentation is about, doing the work. Not the sit and get ment mentality, but doing it. And obviously analyzing and, and that sort of thing. But notice how it's a cycle. It's circular. It goes around and around and around because if you don't continue to grow, you'll stagnate and so will your students. So autonomy. Let's talk about the first prong, this three-pronged approach, autonomy. So teachers are players. They're not pawns in the chess game. We need to be uh, the leaders of our own instruction, but we need people in the classrooms who are willing to help us do that. And so I heard what we were just talking about here with uh, the Delta and, and those things. What I've seen in some schools in the Delta and some underserved schools, we don't have some of the leadership there instructional leadership that's going to help teachers really grow in a meaningful fashion. And that was some of the questions yesterday I had about the Pine Bluff situation. How are um, leaders in those buildings helping? Um, currently the ADE rules, and I've checked with um, Ms. Kaufman, I've checked with Kevin Beaumont, currently the ADE rules allow for flexibility with exactly what I'm talking about. This is, this is what so obviously pa I'm so passionate about because we can do this tomorrow. Um, in the current model, teachers can own their own professional development, so why aren't we doing it uniformly? Um, I have a, a lot of quotes here. We've ran uh, you know, a little longer this morning and great celebrations. I won't go through all of the quotes. You can read them. Uh, they're in your packet. So let's take autonomy. What are the, there's four things with autonomy that are so important. One is the task. Quite simply, with what we're doing in professional development, is it meaningful? When you sit through it, how does it make you feel? Is it meaningful? Does it promote ongoing adult learning? And I think this is something that really gets teachers frustrated. We sit down and we think, okay, how is this going to make me a better teacher tomorrow? And how will this impact my professionalism over the course of the semester or the year? And we're pretty smart. We can decide when it's going to and when it's not going to. And we get frustrated with PD when it doesn't do that. Uh, Richard Elmore at the bottom says PD should be evaluated continuously, continuously, and primarily on the basis of the effect it has on student achievement, not compliance credit. And the, again, these are things that everybody knows, but I'm so passionate about. Um, not compliance credit, ongoing learning. Time. Are we aligning our vision with our schedule? How do our daily schedule, how are some of these schools of innovation tackling the professional development issue? Now, that's what I want to know. Um, how can we make sure job embedded PD is a part of this innovation plan? 
Um, secondly, is the focus of the work um, not predetermined on the amount of time? That, that's a great uh, point. Is the student the constant or is time the constant? What, what do we really value there? Technique. How do we support adult learning? How does it feel, sound, and look? All these things impact what teachers, uh, how they view their professional development. It makes them feel a certain way, it looks a certain way, and it sounds a certain way. And team. Do we trust adults to learn? And that's a question I think principals and the legislators and everybody else really has to ask themselves. Do we really trust the adults in the room to learn? And in my humble opinion, since I'm leaving in about two weeks, I think we would, I think we would pay teachers more if we really believe that they are capable of owning their own professional development and their own learning. Um, so that's, that's just my two cents. So how do leadership styles encourage or discourage productive team learning? That's a, that's a great and important point to make. That's a great question to ask yourselves. Um, is your leadership style discouraging team learning? And do teams feel compliant or autonomous? And I will not go on a soapbox there. All right, now FedEx time. Right, this one is something I really want to talk about with all of you. It's very interesting. I know Mr. Davis knows what I'm talking about with FedEx time. It's called FedEx time because of same day delivery. And you'll see the, these groups, Google, 3M, Atlassian, Best Buy, they all do FedEx time. FedEx time is you have creative think tank time in uh, self-selected groups, self-selected um, pairs or whatever you want to do, and you just think about how you can be progressive in your organization. Well, why don't we do this on the school level? If we know there's community issues, if we know there's problems on, at the school level with culture or whatever else, why aren't we taking time to use teacher voice to figure out how we can be creative to solve these problems? And it, again, that goes back to the, the bit, do we trust teachers? to own their own learning. So the, the problem solving is based on interest and passions. What's wrong with your interest or passions? I would posit that all of you are on this board because of your interest and your passions, and we are all in education because of our interests and our passions. How can the leadership of building and districts make sure we're incorporating interests and passions? So the results, let's talk about that. The post-it note, all of us use post-it notes probably every day, every other day. That came from this FedEx time. Thinking about how they could better the corporation, obviously sales went through the roof for 3M. The post-it note, Gmail, Google News, Google Maps, Instant Messenger, all of these things came through time that wasn't devised strictly for what you do as a corporation. It was outside the box thinking. I want to enter into a school. I want to be in a school system. I want to be in a state where we trust our educators to come up with unique and specific result or uh, processes to make sure our schools and communities are being served. A quote from a Google executive says, basically, everything good in the last seven years came from FedEx time. And this is the Google executive here saying our profit has increased, our brand has increased, our net worth has increased because of 20% of our time where we're not mandating what our, our employees are supposed to be doing and thinking about. And again, this is so exciting to me, this can be counted as professional development. Not as the required 60 or the required 36 as it is, but above and beyond PD hours, as long as it's aligned to school or community improvement. I'm so excited about this. All right, so it's outside the box, obviously allowing time for teachers to, to be in self-selected groups. And this is the second bullet point is so important. Preferably, it is not in your content area. So I'm you know, a pretty decent English teacher, drama teacher and all that. Preferably, I'd be doing something else. So maybe I'm thinking about community involvement. I'm thinking about uh, legislative issues, something like that, where I'm really able to get some outside passions that aren't just in English language arts. And you know, a, little, uh, a poem, because I'm an English teacher. I do love this though. I think it's worthy, it's worthy to read. You need not see what someone is doing to know if it is his vocation. You only have to watch his eyes. A cook mixing a sauce, a surgeon making a primary incision, a clerk completing a bill of lading, wear that same rapt expression, forgetting themselves in a function. How beautiful it is that I on the object look. My colleagues. Teachers all across the state are in this profession because they have their eye on that object look. So how might we as a board, how might we as a state, how might we as policymakers figure out ways to encourage our districts to increase autonomy, continual mastery, and purpose? So why mastery? Control leads to compliance, autonomy leads to mastery, that's simply put, but here's some numbers. U.S. statistic, 50% of employees are not engaged at work. And that's not just in education, that's just largely defined. That's lawyers, that's whoever else, 50%. And 20 are actively disengaged. So if you have an actively disengaged employee, 
They're disgruntled. They're at the water cooler. They're saying negative things. They might even be going out of their way to sabotage someone. And, and that's not a, a school that I want to live in. And, and that's an estimated $30 billion in lost productivity. Mastery is a mindset. Carol Dweck's work with mindset has really influenced the way I view teaching. Uh, the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Uh, encouraging effort, not innate intelligence. And this third point is so important. Some people come up to me and, and they've seen me teach and get all passionate and stand on chairs and do all those things. And they say, it just seems like some sort of magic. I'm like, no, let, no, you're making me sound like some sort of, no, no, it's not magic. It's effort. It's being reflective. It's figuring out what works with your students and how to get the message across to them and how you can continually grow. So when we see great educators, what's our first thought? Oh, it's just them. That's magic. That's how they've developed. Why aren't we trying to bottle that up and figure out how we can we can try harder we can have better effort to help all of our teachers grow emphasis on growth not on magic again some more quotes uh, teaching effectiveness is malleable when to align practices and schedules to reflect this truth uh, Gail like this quote where is she around here somewhere this I'll, I'll mention it because she liked it what people believe shapes what people achieve um, allows us to work through our difficulties. If we really have this vision for what we're doing in the school, we'll put up with some, some negative things. Because we know in the end that we have that vision for success. Mastery is ongoing. We will always reach but never quite achieve full mastery. This is something we, need, we really need to understand. Is our 40 year plan, our 20 year plan or whatever, big enough to where we know we won't reach it tomorrow? Now, put that in the context of professional development. Do we have an audacious enough goal to believe that we want to get so good at PD and how we do it that we're not going to achieve it tomorrow with a quick fix? I don't know the answer to that, but obviously I'll talk about it because I have the time. Um, so let's think about Michael Jordan Cezanne and William Shakespeare. They all worked boldly, continually, in the pursuit of excellence. And this third point I find so interesting. Michael Jordan, when he stopped feeling like he was growing, what did he do? Quit. Twice. He felt, I'm the best in the world. I'm not getting any better. Nobody's challenging me. Drop the mic. I'm out of here. I'm going to play baseball. What? And I get the connection with his father and all that, but he was the greatest in the world, and he got tired of being the only one pushing himself to be better. Think about attrition. Think about retention rates. Do our best educators feel like they're being pushed? Do our best educators feel like they're being appreciated? Action research is the key. So how are our schools approaching PD with action research in mind? The joy is in the pursuit. Mastery attracts because mastery eludes. If we let failure be okay, it's okay to try new things and fail as long as you're on that action research cycle. And these are obviously more quotes you can read on your own time. They're in that packet. Purpose is the last bullet point. Purpose is the context for autonomy and mastery. If we don't believe in what we're doing, we don't have a direction, then we're going to just be compliant and never engaged. And that's some of the conversations I see on the local level in schools. We talk about PD, and it's always compliance versus engagement, and it's not ongoing. And in some ways, uh, <laughs> in some ways, the, the teacher of the year going out into schools and doing PD, even though it can be hands-on, even though it can be great, and even though it can be wonderful, it's still not continuous and it's still not ongoing because I am not an employee of that school district. I am not a coach. I am not in there observing their classroom every day. So we need to rethink, in my estimation, how we view that on a state level and, and see how that would impact a local level. Richard Elmore, Elmore, I have some quotes from him here. He's obviously a world-renowned researcher in education and PD. I will say this second one because it's really, um, it, it really hits me a certain way. So spending more money on existing professional development activities as much, oh, excuse me, as most are presently designed is unlikely to have any significant effect on either knowledge and skill of educators uh, or on the performance of their students. And there's another, I don't know if I mentioned this quote or not yet, but it's because it's not centered on classroom practice. I'll say it again, not centered on classroom practice. Their action research cycle in classroom with your students is what creates the most purpose for PD. So cultivating purpose, how do you do it? These four prongs, connect teachers to their purposes, allow teachers to grow in their purpose, support their continual growth and their link to their purposes, and show how individual purposes create collective purpose. And it's a lot, of, a lot of purpose, 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 but if we don't make sure we're asking teachers simple questions. Ms. Mahoney, what are you passionate about in your school? And then let her talk for, and listen and help her devise a plan in her PGP about how she can connect her vision to that purpose. I think if we did more of that in the state, we could be even that much more influential. But there are schools that are doing it. 
the pronoun test, I love this. Um, Robert Reich, the, the labor secretary under Clinton, uh, had the they versus we mentality. He can walk into an organization and say, hey, how they talk about their group, is it they are doing this or we are doing this? I've applied the same mentality to schools. When I walk into a school, I'll listen to what they say. It's either usually, and it's spot on, they make this decision, they, 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 or we have made this decision, we have done, we have had collective input. Now, let's apply this mentality to professional development. Is there a they mentality in the state of Arkansas? Is there a we mentality in the state of Arkansas? We're a local control state as far as education goes. Do our individual districts feel like it's a they mentality toward PD or a we mentality toward PD? Again, we've got some of both. A better Arkansas, the hope piece. Uh, Job Embedded PD supports growth mindset in teachers, and we can do it. It's you know it's research based. ADE loves it. Everybody I've talked to at the ADE is in full support of it. They love it. I thought I honestly thought I would have a little bit of what are you talking about, young man? When I started, but no, everybody's like, yes, this is you're right. This is this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, so step one, how can we do this? PGPs developed with principals, assistant principals. They'd be ongoing. Um, part of that 18 PD hours next year um, is that. PGPs as a guide, teachers would be observed, the whole action research cycle. Uh, step two continued. Um, they are intended for growth, not just evaluation. It's intended for growth, intended for growth, and obviously feedback is critical. Step three, you come up with a new plan. Step four, you implement it again. <laughs> and this is part of the test model that flows seamlessly with tests. So if we're going to do the evaluation system with tests, you can easily have 200 professional development hours because you are targeting your growth every single day in the classroom. I mean, this, is, this just makes so much sense to me. But that bolded point at the bottom is so important. The instructional leaders in the building must be knowledgeable. If you don't have instructional leaders, and that can come in many forms, principal, assistant principal, coaches, and even teacher leaders who are knowledgeable about the process, it's not going to be implemented with fidelity and it's not going to be very effective. So the results, the teachers will become authors of their own PD. It streamlines the evaluation process. PD is growth oriented, not compliance based, and it, cut, it could cut teacher attrition um, significantly. And that's the research by Richard Ingersoll. He says support and voice are the two biggest uh, factors. So. All of that to say, um, there's a recommendation. So I feel like uh, I, I'm, I've sat on the board all year and you guys have been so great to me and wonderful and, and really appreciated my voice. And I, I've seen a few of these presentations by Teachers of the Year and I wanted to make a formal recommendation, not just, well, duh, we know job, job uh, or excuse me, that professional development should be job embedded, of course, but I want to make a three-prong recommendation to you all. And here it is in short. One, I would love to see a partnership between ADE, uh, Arkansas Education Co-ops, and the school board, uh, State Board of Education to identify and highlight examples of job embedded, autonomy-driven, purpose-driven PD, like we've talked about in the presentation, uh, in professional development in Arkansas schools. This could take the form of a possible subcommittee that includes stakeholders from around the state concerning PD. Because I, I don't feel like professional development is a very attractive topic to talk about in, in school matters a lot, but it's so vital to actual student success. And thirdly, this is just kind of my thinking, it could be monthly, bi-monthly, however you guys would want to do it, but reports to the, the Board of Education identifying best practices in PD that incorporate action research cycles to improve individual practice. And the Arkansas Leadership Academy could help you guys with this. That's another partner you could, you could list. Because it's not going to happen through legislation. We know that. It's not going to happen through legislation. You can't mandate everybody do the right thing, but you can put that social pressure and, and, let, and let there be the, the hope, the highlight of schools all around the state, just like this teacher leadership series. There's schools all around the state who have leaders who are doing these wonderful things from the Delta, South Arkansas, North Arkansas, Northwest, Central Arkansas. It's happening. It's happening. So let's highlight it. Let's show some people uh, what is possible, and hopefully that will spur um, some momentum and get the ball rolling. And lastly, bold examples will make us better. And I truly believe that if you took this bold action uh, to highlight uh, progressive professional development around the state, it not only would make that school better, those students at those schools better, but uh, students and schools and teachers all around the state better and truly push job embedded PD and truly push teacher leadership because that's what our state truly needs. Very good. I think I'm done. Great. Thank you, uh, Jonathan. You've been a, 
an excellent teacher of the year, uh, really. And so, are there questions? For, yes, Vicki? So, I appreciate your recommendation, and I believe 100% you're exactly right. How do we, I mean, I think we need to think about this because it's, I've long been a proponent of um, reforming professional development in the state, and this is just a great opportunity for us to really do something creative and, and be leaders. So I'll, I wish that we could maybe think about how to do that going forward. I don't know who in the department we'd be working with. Ivy, maybe? Yeah. 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 Right. And maybe this is also part of the, the board conversation, right? So in terms of, that. you know, again, not just one light is on, maybe the idea of a committee, and that maybe might be one piece of, mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And just to follow up, and I think we've, we've talked before, probably that greatest challenge is getting the time to do that. Mm -hmm. If there was some way, we, we put in all those academic periods every day, the seven periods. What we need is to carve out that time mm -hmm. that our teachers can get together to do the FedEx type thinking. So. And that's what I'm so encouraged about. Some schools have found ways to do that, very innovative PLCs, which count to do creative thinking. I know Maumel Middle School does some of that, the creative like FedEx time thinking. It's there. We just got to reach out and find it. Well, and on that note, because you, you did reference all the regions of the states, um, do you have some specific schools that you, you would be able to, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be right here in this format, but right. in these last two weeks might be able to share whether it's with Ms. Pfeffer or, or otherwise, or, and you may have that as well, but just, um, I, I'd hate to lose that knowledge, you know, and I know we're hopefully not losing you here in Arkansas, but um, to be able to really take it to the next step from where you've left it here, I think having some of those tangible examples um, as maybe even a starting place for whatever this committee um, could look like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to give him a space of, yeah, to follow up, yeah. And if I may, I don't want to steal any of, I mean, he everything he said, amen, yes, um, I agree. Um, one of the um, strategies that we have in the Equitable Access Plan is to work with four school district schools school district, I don't remember now if it's districts or schools, but what we're going to do is support them to really utilize all the pieces of Bloomboard because that's where the data is all being housed and then they have access to um, different, the, the PGPs there, they have access to different professional development resources and um, Kevin Beaumont and, and I've been working with Bloomboard and what we're actually going to do is look at uh, more of a competency-based PD so that the um, as, as the, the needs are identified and we're not talking big PD events we're talking about resources and support all the way through so with what you are talking about here it maybe we can follow those four um, schools school districts and work with the faculty there because when he said we need to identify um, places where it's being done really well, hopefully that this is going to drive that whole cycle of um, instructional improvement. So um, I would be happy to work with Jonathan and, and any of you to help and, and bring in the school district so we can actually hear it from them that um, my evaluation data is helping to identify areas where I can improve. I'm getting the support that I need. And as I change my practice, this is what I see um, from my students. Because if it doesn't work, then we need to do something else. So it would be a good opportunity and we can follow through. I, I would also want to just reiterate those three prongs, because those are very three pur purposeful prongs that, that I have there. The purpose piece, the continual, ma the continual mastery piece is what we really focus on, but the two others we don't oftentimes give as much credence. The autonomy piece and the purpose piece are also important in that. The continual mastery, we go, yes, yes, obviously you have to be able to do that, but do we really give teachers a little leeway on how they think about their practice and then let them help develop their PGPs? How does that process look? And is that connected to a bigger overall vision for their growth in their profession and their growth of the school? And I don't think those are just abstract ideas. I think there are, are school leaders out there who are really doing that, and I would love to see those come to the forefront of the conversation. Well, it's my hope you'll be one of those very soon. <laughs> so, yeah, really good stuff. So thank you. Congratulations. Completing a year. And uh, we look forward to, I know the board looks forward to being 
uh, partner with you on future uh, endeavors. Thank you. All right. What else do we have, folks? 